So many fishers are anchoring and using baits to catch their fish these days. Keys to success when you're doing that is first finding a fish and then putting your boat in prime position. So anchoring is a major skill when you're doing that. And we're here today with an expert. His job is to take people, catch fish for them, and to do that he has to position a boat again and again on the right spot. So Mitch from Online Fishing Charters, we're in his backyard today. He's going to hopefully catch a snapper. Learn how to anchor, learn how to find them. Hang around, because I reckon we're in for a bit of fun, mate. Hopefully, let's go. We're doing a bit of prospecting at the moment, which means, obviously, Mitch has got several of his marks, which are, in many cases, a little bit of hard to bottom out in a big bay situation. The sort of places which attract a few fish, and the key is now covering as much of that area keeping those eyes glued to the sand. Okay, so a bit of stuff coming up there now. What do you call that, Mitch? Call that more smaller fish, like undersized snapper. Um, no real discreet marks in there. Like this one here is probably a better fish off the back of there. It's more of one lone fish, but yeah, the rest would just be all small undersized stuff. Yep, okay, so not, not too excited about stuff like that at the no. moment. Sort of thing that makes Mitch want to stop and chase snapper, what do you want to see? Uh, more of those discreet marks, sort of one, two, three, four fish on their own. Yep. Um, none of that yellow, greeny stuff around the outside. That's more just those, yeah, smaller fish. Yep. I want to see, yeah. Okay, so blobby stuff, small, when you start seeing those discreet arches, separate fish, then you start going cool, getting close to what I want to stop the fish on. Yeah, definitely. Rodeo Nigel just found some fish here, so we're going to hit our weighing point, make a mark just there. Yep. We'll um, bring up a go-to on this. So we'll put our crosshairs on the screen, up on over our mark, hit the go-to button, and that brings up distance to that destination or distance to that mark, how far away we are. Yes. So we're gonna turn and go upwind or up current. Out here we don't have a lot of current, so today we're just gonna be facing the boat into the wind. Yep. You can see now we're 50 metres away from that spot where we mark those fish. So we've got a little bit of swell from the leftover westerly, so we'll go just a bit on an angle about 13 metres, so we'll push up about 20, 30 metres into the into the wind. And then once we get there, so now we're 30 metres up, just put the boat in reverse, let it down. Reason for the reverse being, let all that anchor chain, anchor sort of spread out from itself. If we just put the boat in neutral, the anchor and the chain will all just sit up in a big pile, it'll all get tangled. So we don't want free fall. Nah. Um, in some situations it's good, but yeah, in the bay and majority of others it's it's not that great. Lay your chain out. Yeah, lay your chain out so nothing tangles up. Yep. On the way down, some of the free fall, depending on what sort of anchors, like your sand anchors and that, can really dart around on the way down. They don't just drop. Yep. So yeah, they can get tangled up a bit. Cool. Well, obviously, you know, we're in 15 metres of water here. Yep. And I noticed a fair bit of chain went out of the front of the boat. Yep. What's your sort of rule of thumb and how much chain for the size of boat? Yep, so you at least want your length of boat in chain. So if you've yep. got a seven metre boat, you at least want seven metres of chain. Like on this, I run 12 metres. Yep. We want to get ourselves 10 metres away at least from where we saw those fish. So we want to be 10 metres to zero metres away. Yep, cool. And I guess another, another thing you see a lot of guys do too is they, they find this spot they want to fish on and then they try and sit right on top of the fish yep. and drop their anchor chain and it's, it's not going to hold particularly where you start getting different ground and stronger current and stuff like that so you've obviously gone 15 meters of water we've yep. gone 30 to 40 meters away from our spot yep and not only that like if you're fishing in a place with a lot of current and you find fish and you yep. hit your waypoint and you just run up the front and drop your anchor you're still going you might be going still downwind or down current so your anchor's going to go the rope's going to go up underneath your boat and it can get wrapped around your motor or your prop and if it's rough that's yep. pretty much disaster. You end up with waves filling your boat up because yeah. it's facing backwards. So yeah. Fair enough. I guess to the other thing, no dramas having a bit of extra line out there. And if, if you don't get quite to where you want to be, there's nothing wrong with just letting a few more metres out. So yeah. it gets to that prime position. Now I notice you know, you've left us about 15 odd metres away from the spot, which is yep. ideal now because we're not also not we're not dropping bait straight onto these fish. We're actually casting out over them and letting our baits come through them. So yeah, exactly. Well, we're yeah, 13, 14 metres straight out the back. We've got where our fish were, let out a bit of burley and stuff. And not only that, like on the screen here, we're marking a few fish now. So cool. yeah, it's going to be good. He goes pretty well, that stuff, mate. If you'd failed that task, I was going to go find another charter off right now. <laughs> Let's go fishing. Let's go catching fish. We 
using a variety of fish baits at the moment. We made yep. obviously some soft ones, but also the hardy ones like your whiting yep. to survive the pickers and draw the attention of some bigger fish. But it sometimes comes with a few rigging considerations. Yes. Show us how you do it. So on this one, we've got a set of snailed hooks. Put your first hook in the bottom of the bait, like that. Roll him over, put our second hook on the other side, further towards the tail in this situation. Make sure there's no scales on the hook points. And then just a couple of half hitches. One first one round the hook, another one about halfway up, and one right up at the tail. And that's about it. Runs down to that small ball sinker there. Ideal, and we're throwing that as far as we can away from the boat. Let out a, a chunk of line. loose line, and yep. it's going to really subtly drift, drift on down and find a rest on the bottom half the time when the fish are active. They'll eat it on the way down. Yeah, it won't even get to the bottom. Always going to smooch along and suck that in. Yes. And away we go and hopefully we hit the sound of a drag gun soon. Oh. Good work, Mitch. Didn't take too long, mate. I don't think it's a massive one, but it's a fish. It's right. oh, awesome. First bay snapper for the afternoon. Key to catching fish is all about finding them and then fine tuning, getting your boat and you in the right position to put out a bait or a lure. The reason we caught one so quickly is Mitch did his job to the T. He's found us fish and he's put us right onto them. What a lovely start. On you, Mitch. Rightio, so we'll go through the type of anchor and chain and everything we're running on this particular boat. Up the front we've got a 30 pound Lone Star Marine mud magnet or more commonly known as a plow anchor. Connected to that we've got 12 mil chain and 10 meters of it up to our rope. It's pretty simple to use. We've got an isolator switch down here. We'll push that in and now our anchor won't work. Isolates the power. As soon as we push that in we've got power to our switch so pretty much up is up, down is down. That's about all there is to it. In our boat, we've chosen a Lone Star Marine winch to use just for the quality and the power. We're using quite a big anchor and quite a lot of chain, so we need something with the power to lift it up and down, up and down all day long. Not only that, there's support 365 days a year for us and majority of the people in Melbourne. Over the years, we've been through a lot of different brands of winches. We found the Lone Star the most reliable and the service that we have is just amazing in Melbourne and throughout Australia. The boys down there, they've got every product we need for anchoring from winches, anchors, chain, rope, all the hawse pipes, just about everything. There he is. So we've got to our spot, anchored up, put a bit of burley out, throwing our baits out. This one's just an un unweighted bait. We've got real small like pea sinker down to a couple of 5.0 suicide hooks. I don't think this is a massive fish. But every one of them counts, I suppose. Yeah, exactly right. It's all fun and games. Ooh. I can see a bit of colour there, mate. Yeah, exactly. He's alright, actually. He's alright. Yep. Beautiful. There we go. It's the, the famous spot X of Mitch's. 30 metres ahead of us, we've got our anchor rope laid out into the wind. But, mate, in terms of making anchoring effective and enjoyable, because that's how it should be, I think, if you want to get good at it, three key tools. Definitely the sounder, GPS, and the winch. Use sounder, find our fish, locate them, then hit waypoint on the GPS and we know where we're always going to be. And then, yeah, the winch, the winch just makes it so easy to be able to just press a button and drop otherwise like 25, 30 kilos of anchor and chain, which you have to pull up every single time. Yep. Considering that it's just so easy, just hit a switch and it's up or it's down. It's um, when you're sounding around, so you might anchor up on one spot, and there's not a lot of fish there or you've seen a lot of fish and they're not hungry. Have to pick up, move around again and again and again. Some days, like we move up 10 times a charter, so five hour session, you're moving every sort of half an hour sort of thing until you find those fish that are on the chew. So yeah, it makes it so easy. Well, mate, um, I was happy because there's only two of us on board, and I thought I was going to be anchor boy for the day. <laughs> I was very happy when I saw some technology on the front and clicking buttons and anchors up, anchors down. Happy days. Yeah. Didn't even feel like there was a fish there at the start. A lot of loose line. There you go. Lightly weighted. Yes. Mate, we've got a mixture of sourries, pillies, and 
silver, silver whiting. whiting in action, yeah. just to try and find what the flavour of the day is. So, you know, like obviously a really, really lightly weighted bait, small pea sinker in the old snood rig, a couple yep. of hooks. This time of year, like coming around December as well, you get a lot more of the smaller fish on the reef. Yep. So those whiting, sourie stuff like that, even if King George whiting's a lot hardier, stops the small fish biting them up as much. Yep. Gives the bigger fish a bit of time to actually find your bait. Awesome. All right, sure. mate. Well, they're starting to bite, and I know what happens here. It gets a bit trendy when one bites. There's yes. a good chance you're going to catch another one. So we're going to, uh, he's going to make a beautiful barbecue for dinner tonight. And uh, pull the hooks out. Time to go and catch another one. Yeah, I reckon so. Sort of mixed our approaches. We've got some Paternoster rigs on the bottom and we're throwing floaters out, which by that I mean really lightly weighted bait. So we've got our bases covered. And if you did this in any of the snapper waters around Australia, you'd catch them doing this. Keep a couple of baits close to the bottom, a couple slowly drifting through the water yeah, column. Yeah, they're there, Bit of burly. You'll catch them wherever. Oh yeah. That's a nice that's fish got, on that, that one, has I got some gut. Yeah. You can always just be patient on fish like this. There's not a lot of structure down there for them to do you on. Biggest threat is a drag that's too tight and popping a line, or hook getting spat. This means you just want to use your drag, the medium to soft drag, let the rod do its work, try and coax the fish up towards the net. It's <laughs> playing up a bit. Oh, that's a lot of fun. Good trick with your net jobs is let your fish be subdued, get the net in the water, and then just slowly lead that head into the net. You don't want nets getting thrown at fish because sometimes they trap hooks and allow fish to spit those hooks out. There you go, beautiful fish, mate. Look at that in the Arvo light. I can see why you like catching them, Mitch. We all like them for a reason, mate. They're aggressive, they eat well. You saw how that fish took off. <laughs> Hit it like a ton of bricks. Beautiful. And once it's on a whiting head. Mate, once again, too, the benefit of obviously, you know, you, you've, you've sounded your ground, you've searched them out, found your patch of fish, and, you know, we looked at a few and I went, why aren't you stopping at those? You said, no, no, I'm gonna, I want the right sound. We found it, yep. saw consistently good arches in amongst it, and then you put us right on the spot. And after that, a bit of good technique. And away you go. The recipe of fishing, you get it right, and you're in for fun. That being said, mate, the sun is getting a bit low, and I reckon the big ones might come on. That's how Mitch's burley starting to work, because I reckon I threw that one down. Down the burley trail, good 30, 40 metres behind the boat. Put it in the rod. Holder, of which I've got plenty to choose from on Mitch's boat. I reckon I was just getting comfortable in the way we went. So we're getting active. And we could be in for some fun. <laughs> oh yeah. Good fish, getting there. You're getting bigger. Nice fish, Beautiful mate. Beautiful fish. There's a hook on the other side there. Was a word of warning when you're using Snelled rig like this, couple of hooks. You grab a fish and you've got to be wary there's always another hook. <laughs> on the other side. There's an afternoon with the boys from Online Fishing Charters giving us what I reckon a great tips, doesn't matter where you fish. At the moment we're in Port Phillip Bay, which is a renowned snapper fishery. I come from Queensland and up there, mate, we use exactly the same techniques for trying yep. to find your fish. Don't necessarily start fishing until you know the fish are there and then get your boat in the right spot. Definitely. Get it right, we're in for fun. Exactly, mate. You are fishing down this way. Come and see Mitch and the boys. I reckon you're in for some fun as well. Whew. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show. And if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.